Alright, Katie, you won this round. <laughs> really? Yeah, she was first. Okay. Well, Katie, we will shotgun a beer at the end of this, and it's gonna be on the edit. <laughs> yeah, we'll do we'll do it yeah, after. We'll, I promise we'll it'll it. happen. We can we can put up another live video just of that. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if we can do multiple live videos. Waiting at people spawn. I like your job, Nicolette. <laughs> wave, wave, wave. She's saying can she'll you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? How come I can't hear you? Oh, why does this keep happening, you rock? Everyone else can hear me, right? Plug in your headphones! <laughs> Let me try something. I guess I were even calling. you think by week four that we'd can have you hear us? I can hear you now. I'll just take the earpiece off. All right. I was going to say, you think by week four we'd have this down? No, I had these in before. I don't know why they're not working. Out. That's all right. I, I don't need it. Good. I don't need a buddy. And I'm glad I'm you're wearing a helmet. Yeah, you told me to be prepared with a helmet, so I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Things sound like they're going to get rough in the kitchen. <laughs> prepared. <laughs> I don't know. You might be banging your head against the, the, the stove. Are you about to, to cook with us? I see you're, uh, you're wearing your chef, chef uniform. <laughs> well, you know, this is an important day. It's our fourth one. <laughs> we made it a month. Well, I don't have to be my grubs, you know. <laughs> so how you doing, buddy? What are you drinking? Just, hey, neighbor. We're going with Gantz's today. Yeah, that a boy. Classic. I'm not quite sure what I'm drinking. Some some vino? Yeah, Andrew Peace, Masterpiece, a Syrah. There we go. And Fine it's only, you know, you know, it's only 4.30 in the afternoon here, so That's a little funny. before the 5 o'clock tipper. I'm going to keep this helmet close in case we need it. Mm. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, today's dish is going to be a lot of fun. It's one of my favorites. I mean, I've made it a lot over the years. There's a lot of different... What I like about this dish today is uh, you can really change it up with uh, ingredients you might have left over in your fridge. Uh, and well, it's kind of a good base for a lot of different adventures that you can come out of this one recipe. Sweet. So are you pans, ready to go, my brother? Pans, pans getting hot. We should be good to go in like thirty yeah, seconds. It doesn't have to get too hot. I mean, it, oh, okay. it doesn't have to like be smoking hot. Now let That's me right. see the size of the pot. Because everything's going to be cooked in one pot. Yeah. Oh, perfect. That's We're plenty size. Cooking. We figured it would work. Yeah, I was just going to say. Uh, plus, you can see inside of it really well. We got all our. Oh, you know, right off the bat, you, you might want to just get the salt pork in there. Okay. And if you see. That in a recipe, it's kind of an old ingredient. You don't see it too often, but they that, still sell uh, it in the stores. Is it fatty enough that we won't have a problem, or should I add some oil to the pan? I don't know. Let's see. I mean, that's why you don't cook it at you know, a really high temperature right okay. at this moment. All so right. throw the salt pork in there. It'll start to render, which it basically just means you're going to cook out some of the fat that's in it. Um, but that salt pork is a big part of old world cooking. Salt pork was a main ingredient uh, to uh, get some of that fat into whatever you were cooking. I say so, when you told me, but when you added it to the recipe, the only time I'd ever seen this before was actually down by Philly. Like, is it this what they make pork roll egg sandwiches with in Jersey? That's Not right. Like big New York and Jersey thing. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But I mean, it's a, as I said, this, that was a worldwide thing. of salt pork as a uh, first ingredient uh, to render down and get the fat out of it to cook with yeah um uh it's basically bacon yeah you know i was good when she uh, when i brought it in pork, it was like just a giant thick cut <laughs> it's just a big big just a block chunk. but did yeah. you notice that most salt pork has skin on it that's uh, the outside of the pig yeah that's i was gonna say i thought it was a thick layer of fat but that was probably just the it, that, it's a the layer of skin like, and you want to cut that off uh, because you're going to, I like leaving the salt pork in the dish, you know, cause it's like little pieces of bacon. Yeah. I was going to uh, say, it reminds, it reminds me of like a pancetta or something. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, pr it's pretty close to that. This is more of the fattier end of the, uh, the belly. It's the belly. 
The belly of the beast. Yeah, that's not the, well, it's the belly of the beast. <laughs> so now you, you just cut that up. You diced it up. You put it in. Yep, that's what we're working with. Yeah. Wow, you not a lot of fat on there, a lot of meat. It was that's a meaty thing. <laughs> salt pork. <laughs> you should have seen the full Where thing. did you buy that? <laughs> Where did you buy? That's great. No, you want that. Well, actually, we wanted the fat, so you might want to put a tablespoon of oil in there just to squirt to get it going. All right. You know, I can do that. You still have to. We're going to bring add, back our trusty sock. I was just going to say oil. nothing like a little Nike oil. <laughs> <laughs> Better than viewers, Quaker State. <laughs> yeah. For the viewers that have been here since the beginning, we hope yeah. someday that we'll be sponsored by Nike. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Send us those sneakers. We need sneakers while we're cooking. And now it's sizzling. So it's not sizzling. So what's yep. going to happen? Are those ingredients? Uh, the oil is going to come out, and like in bacon, you know. And yep. we're going to make a roux in there. We have some other ingredients. We'll throw those in after that. That, okay. that uh, uh, salt pork starts to cook up a little bit. The idea is to cook it down until it's uh, kind of crunchy. Okay. And uh, then we could then we could start throwing some uh, items in there, but it is um, kind of the base of the flavor profile in the, in this this dish. Uh, it's, it's not the overwhelming else. one, but it's got that real strong flavor um, that is very New Englandy. So if you start smelling it, you're seeing it cooking around. You can just use a wooden spoon. I, I, in this kind of dish, way ahead. Yeah. I wrote it down. <laughs> hey, Nicole, what's I up? Following follow instructions really well you're good you're good so it's starting to sizzle yep and some of the fats and, uh, coming the, out. yeah the smaller pieces are starting to cook down but the thicker ones are still so the bacon little, part. looking a little hammy yeah you know basically it's a piece of bacon you know but as i said it's yep. a fat end uh because they want but you got one with all meat <laughs> <laughs> I swear I it's salt pork on it. it. <laughs> There's a little bit. Of, you, did you cut the fat off? Uh, some of the skin I had tossed, but not the all skin. Yeah, no, the yeah. skin's fine. Yeah, you want to make no, sure. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't cool. trim it. Aside from that, I just left it. No, I didn't say trim. So that's good. Yeah. So you did follow the uh, directions. Let's see. Uh, I so how's the weather there? Uh, isn't today they opened up Rhode Island a little bit? It looks beautiful there. Look at that sunset. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. I saw on the news some uh, clips from uh, Milford, Connecticut. It looked really, uh, really nice out. And people yeah. were getting out. I was going to say, it's supposed to be 72 tomorrow and then 80 or 81 on Friday. Nice. So we're getting into the, the heat of it. You, you can't beat that. All right. And I'd you know this. This is, this is looking pretty I, cooked. It's, it's looking good. Well, now you, you can throw the celery, onions, garlic, red pepper, and, sh and carrots in there. Celery? So everything is all chopped. Yeah, I was looking for that. Onions, Friends. garlic, carrot. And you can put that heat up a little higher. What's it at right now? Now, now medium. It's it was a little. It was on medium, but I just turned it up. You can kick it up a little bit. You want to saute up these vegetables the, in that oil. The corn in there too? No. Okay. No, not yet. Uh, just shredded right. carrot, red pepper, garlic, onion, celery, and the salt pork. Yep. So you want to swirl those around. You want to make sure that you're uh, you're cooking those, sweating those out, but in the oil. So that's why I wanted a little higher, so we make sure that that oils. I'll, yeah. I'll add a little more. It looked like it was soaking up. Yeah, not too much, but yeah, that. As I said, traditionally, uh, salt pork is a lot more uh, fattier Fatty. than the one that you had. Uh, you know, they do cut it up, and sometimes you'll get part of that uh, get close to the, the bacon end of it, you know, that they yep. use for bacon more the end of the brisket there. So that that's that's good, but, but it's pork. <laughs> and uh, so you swirl those around, get them cooking, and tell me what's going on. How you doing today? Well, we should probably start with why we're here again, because we keep forgetting these days. You know what? Let's <laughs> tell, tell the folks. <laughs> While we're so we, here. Well, let's tell where you are. Maybe well, they don't I'm, know. I'm in Rhode Island. I've been riding out the lockdown in Cumberland where I grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, as everybody knows, for those viewers that have stuck with us since the beginning, uh, we were trying to figure out how to give back to those that are being affected by COVID-19. Uh, 
a big, I guess, area of work slash expertise that me and Rock both value very strongly is the uh, culinary industry. Rock went to mm-hmm. Johnson & Wales. So we uh, partnered up thanks to right. them networking connections. And we are trying to raise money for the Rhode Island Relief, uh, Rhode Island Hospitality Relief Fund. Which is a great cause. I'm glad you stepped up and did that. And, um, you know, I mean, that whole tri-state area and even Rhode Island, you guys got hit pretty hard. And uh, I know, I think today you guys, did restaurants open up on a limited basis Rest- today? I was going to say, I think restaurants, uh, they might have started in Rhode Island. I know I've been paying more attention to Massachusetts just because that's where the apartment is. Uh, right. The mass restaurants are supposed to be the first week of June, I believe. Okay, well, a couple and weeks away. There, I know Connecticut, you opened up limited. Yeah, I know Rhode Island as of as of Friday, they're going to have a couple of the beaches open, so they're they're trying. Oh, that's nice. That that makes it nice for Memorial Day weekend. I mean, I yeah, can't believe exactly. that coming up already. I think, I think they realized that people were going to hit the beaches regardless. <laughs> well, I was going <laughs> to so say like, better better than uh, having them storm the beach. Yeah, uh, exactly. have them just go on there. That's good. That's good. So how's that looking in that pot? It smells those, great. Are those vegetables starting to, there's I mean, a, there's have to be browned up. Yeah, I was going to say, there's some liquid coming out. Uh, well, that's, that's good and bad. We don't want them sweating too much. Well, I want that oil. I, I wouldn't there. say it's too much. I mean, it's not it's not a wet pan at the bottom, but there's definitely, the okay. all are giving off some juice. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to make a room. Okay. And, uh, you know, that the fat that's in there is what was needed. Oh, oh that looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, put the uh, flour in right now. Okay. And that's going to soak up any liquid that's in there. We're going to move that around a lot. Just kind of spread it around. That way that uh, a roux is uh, equal parts fat. So it could be butter, it could be oil. In this case, it's the oil from the salt pork and the little oil you put in there. So yep. equal amounts. Um, if it's too dry, you might ha- add a little more oil to it because, uh, as I said, that salt pork from the original, uh, look of it wasn't going to give off too much fat. So as long yeah. as that's kind of looking like the, the flour is being absorbed, is that, I can't really see that yeah. well. But I mean, it's sticking, it? to the ve- it's sticking to the vegetables. <laughs> yeah. We'll put a little bit of, a little oil in there. So then it, it, it'll, uh. Okay. energize the the flour that's gonna because that's gonna be basically our our and and that's not uh, a sake he's putting in there that's a, yeah, that's no, a that's, nike oil bottle it turns out there is a, <laughs> there is a bottle cap that's it trying to sure, there's a bottle sure cap there. <laughs> wait a minute it's yellow mustard it's good for you <laughs> so mix that around and mix that flour and yep. you're going to kind of cook that roux as they call it and um and move that around so it doesn't get stuck on the bottom. Yep. And it'll start to change. The flour will start to change color as you're cooking it. And a roux could be used for a lot of different sauces, everything from a bechamel, which is a white sauce, basically milk flavored, and or a velouté, which is a stock, uh, which is basically kind of what we're making here, but we're making it into more of a chowder. Ooh. And, um, <laughs> What's that, Dan? <laughs> Nicolette said, did you just reveal something? We've been trying to figure out since you sent us the recipe list. My initial thought was white chili, but without beans. And Nicolette yeah. was like, I think it's more of a soup. But we didn't know. For some reason, chowder, even though we're in Rhode Island, did not come to mind. <laughs> and, and you said it wrong, too. It's, it's chowder. Chowder. If it is, it's going to be a chowder. <laughs> come on over here. So only for about three to five minutes, we do the flour bit. Because the yep. more you cook it, the darker it gets. Yeah, so and, we're getting to like a, a brown, like cookie kind of shade. Yeah, we don't want it too dark. Uh, the darker, as I said, it gets the soup will or stock or the chowder or whatever you're making will get darker. So, you know, in, in, in days when, you know, you, you bake it, you know, and it's brown and use it for all types of Cajun dishes, you know, yep. as a thickener. Uh, in our culinary world, it's used to thicken a lot of different sauces, in this case, the chowder. So now that that's all cooked up, you could add uh, the chicken broth. Uh, did you, like, get whole chickens and cut them up and make stock? No, nah, we weren't that fancy. I bought box stuff. <laughs> oh, the, okay. It's cans? Or a, a it was box? A, bo- a box of chicken stock, yeah. That's okay. Okay, add this in? Just, yeah, yeah. Add it in and have your spoon ready because it might. 
Yeah. Somebody said they lost the sound. I'm, yeah, I'm checking on that right now. We seem to be uh, like I say, okay if you can here. Hear me, uh, other people should be all right. Okay, is that three cups? Yep. Okay, and I'll swirl it around. Get that stuff off the bottom. Yeah, and uh, it'll thicken the soup. Yep. A little bit. And don't be afraid if it, get, it feels like it's getting too thick here because at the end we'll be thinning it out with milk. Okay. I was going to say, as so, of now, it doesn't seem too thick. No, it, it, it's chowdery. You know, yep. that's where you want it. Yep. So bring that around and let it come to a quick boil, and then we're going to turn it down right. a little bit because the other ingredients we're going to add are, you know, things that you don't have to worry too much about uh, except for the next ingredient. So make sure that comes up to a little bit of a boil. Yep, I just turned it all the way up to high. So we'll and as, like as you're doing that right now, Dan, you could throw in that chicken. Okay. Oh, now I can barely hear him. Is there something wrong? You talking? Did you? Uh, uh, now, now I can hear. <laughs> Did I what? I can't hear you now, Dan. Did, what did you do? I didn't do anything. No. What happened to the audio, Dan? You turn up yours, Brock. <laughs> you about Can you guys hear me? me? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? What happened to you? I don't know. Like it's Did not... you leave here, though? No, I didn't. Can other people hear? Yes, everyone. Can I, I can't. I, I could hear you, but I can't hear you loud. It's his It's his side. I can say, I can take out my... Okay. Eric Aiken hear us. Okay, so... Do you want to Rock. close the Bluetooth, mm -hmm. or no? Let me... Them. Keep an eye on that soup. <laughs> Keep cooking, Dan. <laughs> so, Dan, did you put the chicken in? I did now. <laughs> okay, little chunks. Little chunks. Perfect. Can you hear me? Mix that around so uh, mm -hmm. when that stock gets hot, it'll cook. Yeah, I'm on full blast. I don't know why we had no problems week number week one and two. Yeah, I can't really hear you that well. What about me? People are saying when they can hear us both, so right. here we go, folks. <laughs> I wonder Shit if we just drop the, Let's drop drop the boy cook. And I'll just yell. So Dan, <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. yeah okay. I can hear you. I just don't think you can hear me. Here you Everyone's saying they could hear us both. So, all right, we just turned off. All right, can you hear me now? So that the chicken is moving, right? Yeah. Can you hear me? No. No. Didn't get any better. Oh God. <laughs> it's his. It's his. I don't understand why we. Had so while that's going, Dan. Yep. It's thickening it up. Yep. So yeah. now you get to add the corn. The, the Worcestershire sauce? Yep. Hot sauce? What kind of hot sauce did you get? Cute. Uh, Say cute. Say cute. Cute? <laughs> I don't know. Something that was in Nicholas Fridge. Hot sauce. Fresh thyme. Looks cool. nice. How about some white pepper? Yeah. A little bay leaf? Um, Yep, just put the whole leaf right in. We'll get to take it out later, but it gives a nice little uh, fragrance. Now blend that out really well together. Yep. Now, now how's that chicken going? Starting to cook. Good. It never got to a boil, but I think we're we're still yeah. on high. <laughs> so you know what we're going to do right now? What's up? We're going to add the milk. But then we'll let this sucker simmer. Add um, how much you got there? One cup. I Add a half cup. a cup first, and then blend it around. See how loose it gets. Blend it around. Then you could add more if you need to. Okay. Make sure you blend it really well. We don't want the milk to be alone. <laughs> you can't hear a word I'm saying. No. <laughs> This is 
Hey, Dan, was that three cups of stock you put in? Three cups of what? Stock? Yeah. <laughs> you put yeah. three in? Yep. Three? Yeah. Okay. We have a little more if you think we should add it. So you're probably going to need the rest of that milk so you can put the milk in the other half. All right. Give that a swirl. Bring it up to a, a little bit of a boil. Make yep. sure that chicken's cooked. And if anyone can guess by now, what do we make, Dan? Chicken chowder. Chicken and corn chowder. Should I cover this? Is that no, you don't have to cover it. Just keep an eye on it. You want it to come to a little bit of a boil? I'm waiting. Can you tell me how thick it is? It was okay. Thick. It was thicker before, but I'm sure it'll thicken up. Well, once it comes to a little bit of a boil. Yep. Yeah, it'll thicken up a little. You might have to add a little more milk. Okay, we have more stock, too. It's up to you what you want to use. We got both. Did you hear me? No. You Good. <laughs> I can hear you. I just can't hear you. Okay, well, I said we have more stock, too, if he wants to add that. You can put, put a little more stock in there. All right. Just to thin it out, and then you can bring it to the boil. Boil it up. Somebody asked if you could use this for, uh, uh, say, a chicken and corn pot pie. That would be awesome. You could buy some uh, puff pastry already made. Lay that inside of a muffin tin. Put this inside. Make sure it's all covered with a top on it. And bake it. Oh, yeah. But you you don't want to thin it out uh, as much. I was going to use it for pot pie. I wouldn't put the milk in. I would just keep it real thick. And uh, that's looking good, Dan. Did yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's looking good. It looks good to me. Because <laughs> you're so good, Dan. Dan, you look like you got a little sun. A little bit. I've been, you know, it's time to hang outside. You've been doing so? Oh, wow. Okay, you saw it inside your ear. Because it's time. Guess it's time for that once a week shower. <laughs> okay. I shower daily. <laughs> yeah, okay. Tell everybody. <laughs> you know, the benefits of already the benefits of already being unemployed before this was I was prepared to wear pants despite not having anywhere to go. <laughs> I have no pants on. <laughs> <laughs> I have shorts. No pants chef. So how's that is it coming to a boil yet? Yeah, just uh, it's like you don't want to. You don't it's want to like warm. Oral, You just want. Uh, it's just starting. The chicken to cook. Okay, I see some little bubbles. That's looking good. Good. You can stir it. You want. You don't want it to stick to the bottom because there's milk in there and it has a tendency to stick sometimes. Ah, that's looking damn good. Is it thickening up a little more, Dan, as it cooks? Yeah, a little bit. Adding the stock was definitely the right move. It was well, that's a, that's okay. You could always thin it out if you had to, but yeah. only if you need to. You know, I mean, at the end. Yeah, it's still. Okay. Little, we'll let it thicken more. No, no more playing with your food. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Donnelly wants to know if you deliver. Yeah, if he's willing to pay my gas. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna deliver to the house? Some garlic bread on the side? Oh, yeah. Man. You didn't tell me to buy that. <laughs> That'd be good. Huh? I, I like this dish because you can add anything you want to it. You know, I mean, you can go if you have leftover beef or some fish. So check that chicken first off to make, before you taste anything. Make sure the chicken's cooked. So pull up a piece of chicken and check it out. Make sure it's done. <laughs> Is it alive? <laughs> That's that. After you. Is it, does it look cooked? Okay. Yeah. How about me? You want some? Mm. We're cooked through. Is it cooked all the way through? Yep. If it wasn't, you'd be, you'll be dead in 10 minutes. That's fine. Okay. No big deal. <laughs> so how's the flavor? Does it need a little more salt? A little, it's the best time. It needs salt. <laughs> 
Hey, golly, you are correct, sir. <laughs> I'm full of gas. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Of all the years, that's the one thing you know about me that stayed true all the way through, right? Hope you and Mo are doing great. So what do you think there, Dan, the man? I added salt. Need a little more salt, okay? Yeah, I just added some. That's what you want to do at the end. You know, you test seasoning at the end, not at the beginning. Yeah. Because a lot of you cook it, especially pepper. When you put even black pepper, if you put it in there, if it's good quality, freshly ground black pepper, the more you cook it, the more intense the flavor profile will get in the dish. So it could be really hot all of a sudden. I don't put any hot pepper in there. Well, check if It's the know. actual pepper. Uh, I, I found out a, a lot of years, although I like spice. And I think I mentioned I had some Thai food last night. Local restaurant we had it delivered. Rock. <laughs> Rock. Rock. I was sweating like I did a marathon, brother. <laughs> I told him, make it extra hot. Make it Rock. extra hot. Oh, Rock. Rock. Oh, behave. It was hot. It was hot. So I only ate half of it. You know when it's something, something's too spicy, it's just, I can't eat it anymore. And I have, like an idiot, I had it for breakfast. So, <laughs> so I've had a little heat all day. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Am I loud? Can you hear us? We forgot to put in the garlic. Do you want us to put it in now? No. Okay. I, I, I told him to. I told him to. That's okay. If you put it in now, you're just going to have a lot of garlic floating around. <laughs> Dan, that would be okay for me. It wouldn't bother me at all. But for most people, it might go, oh, what the heck was that I just ate? So how's it looking? Thicken it up. Okay. That's that will thicken up if you boil a little bit more. Okay. And uh, then the chowder will be done. Right. You want it to coat the back of the spoon. Yeah, it's not doing that yet. Still dripping. So that that will happen when you boil that up a little bit. Okay, it's starting to go. So, uh... You have this. You have a soup bowl. We're gonna garnish it up too, right? A little cheese, yeah. a little dill. Yeah, we do. Dill. You can wait. Once that comes to a boil, Dan, that the sucker is gonna thicken right up again. Okay. Or back up. So that's it's good. It's starting up there. Yeah, it'll thicken. That'll be good. And as I said, you know, I wanted to share a little tip uh, for my corn chowder making days, especially from Connecticut. Rhode Island, that area, when corn is available, and I sure hope it is this year. Uh, I, I like using the Silver Queen, butter and sugar. And what I'll do is I will take the raw stalk of corn, the whole ear, and I'll cut all the kernels off. Here you and then I'll get that chicken stock. Mm -hmm. I'll put the actual the ear without the kernels in it, into the stock and then bring that to a boil. Once that comes to a boil, uh, and then let it simmer a little, you're gonna have like really corn, real strong corn infusion into that chicken stock. And it really makes a big difference when you're making this dish. Because what it'll do is it just really amplifies that corn. And then when you throw that corn in there, that's gonna release because it's starchy. And when it cooks, it'll release sugars and Oh my gosh! I mean, I around our house in Connecticut, we used to get the uh, uh, the butter and sugar Silver Queen, and it was so sweet. I mean, you could almost didn't have to cook it. You know, it was just so dang sweet. So the cooking of the ear really makes a big difference in that mm -hmm. stuff. Move that around, Dan. You don't want to boil too much. I don't want that milk to separate. So that's looking dang good. It's getting there. Still not exactly sticking, but yeah, I need a uh, need a little more boiling. I mean, obviously we're cooking quite quick to to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. How long do you usually have your chowder sitting? Yeah, yeah. It'll cook. You know what you're doing is you're removing some of the liquid through steam in the boiling process, which helps thicken it. And of course, the root is a thickening agent. And. Uh, that will continue to thicken as, as liquid gets reduced. 
but that that uh, the stock with the corn, uh, yeah, that's the way to do it. It's really delicious that way. So I can't wait when the season comes out for you guys to uh, give it a try again and yeah. um, I was gonna say, use I think that. I think it's usually chicken around August broth. or so over this way. What's that, Dan? It's usually around August that the corn gets fresh. August. Yeah, end of summer. End of summer. But the way this weather is, I don't know. It's freaky. Out here in California this week, we had a little more rain, which is unusual. But it got cold. It was like 60 degrees here during the day. We had three days where it was like I almost had to put a jacket on. Almost. Yeah, got to move back east. It's warm here. Feel real bad for me, don't you? Yeah. But that's unusual for this time of year, you know. A lot of fog, uh, strange weather, strange weather patterns. But I, hey, I wanted to give a, a little toast to all the people that have, have donated. We want to thank you because without our hospitality industry, uh, we have nothing, nothing. These people depend on uh, a, a job, whether it is the dishwasher to the pantry or the cleanup crew, uh, all the way through the chefs, all the way up to the servers and waiters and hosts. Uh, that is something where, you know, we can't live without. And these people need help right now. So I always see the big guys getting all the help, you know, we complain and, and moan, you know, the, air, the airlines got bailed out. Ooh, they're solving again. Yeah, you know, then we just give them like $50 billion. So it was like, wait a minute. The restaurant people, the hospitality people need our help, folks. Hey, you know what? We went out last night and, and got Thai food, and it wasn't cheap. I don't have to tell you. I yeah. could probably made 10 meals for the amount of money we paid for uh, that one. But it was a special night. And I think that, um, you know, for someone to go and donate 10 bucks, Dan, no big deal, right? Yeah, so uh, I think in total we're at like 450 ish raised. But Nicholas' parents just donated hundred dollars. I made a promise last week that anyone that donated fifty dollars, I would come cook for them. Nobody did it. So anybody that would like to donate fifty dollars to the link in our bio, you got a will, dinner from Dan. He's already got the soup ready. Exactly, I'll deliver. Just Hope you're freezing money. all this stuff, Dan. <laughs> help me help you. Hey, that looks like it's sticking up nicely. Yep. So if you want, you know, usually what happens with soups like this, once they set and sit for a little while, uh, they're good to make early. And then when you reheat them, you okay. know, just warm them back up. They'll, they'll, they'll be really thick. You might have to thin it out again um, with a little liquid. But uh, at this stage, it's really a nice light chowder. So if you put some in a bowl, uh, we'll finish up with the garnishing part. That's it. Got to taste it. Always taste. That looks good. <laughs> Yum. I need the wine. No, that looks good. That's good, Dan. You don't have to fill it to the brim. Got to make sure the colors are shown. Yes. And you can turn it off. Put a lid on it? Me. I'm watching out for you. Put a lid on it? No, you don't have to. Okay. It'll be fine. That so stuff, I'll that'll I'll probably admit, stay hot for an hour. I'll admit that we forgot dill, but we have cheese. <laughs> Got the crowd waiting for dinner. So now you have a little garnish. What do you yeah. have there, Dan? I just, I just said, I don't think you heard me, but we forgot the dill, but I have a lot of Asiago. That's perfect. Food? Right. So you can sprinkle a little cheese on top. You definitely didn't hear me. <laughs> That's nice. Then we have some fresh dill. Were you able to find that? I just said I forgot that. <laughs> oh, you forgot it? You can't hear me, but yeah, I forgot. That's that. okay. I can't hear you. Oh. <laughs> First it's the garlic. <laughs> then it's the dill. So if you had some fresh dill, even green onion, parsley, cilantro, whatever you want. <laughs> at the end and sprinkle some on top. Gives it that little boost of flavor. But I'll tell you what, Dan, I think you did a superb job. A superb and the camera job. work isn't bad either, Nicole. <laughs> Maybe one of these weeks I'll Thank do. you, I tried. You got it, darling. Yeah, you did a great job. 
So Dan, <laughs> cheers. What's up? Did you have any clue what you were going to make when you saw the ingredients? No, I told you. I thought we were making a white uh, chili. Like a white chili. Yeah, when you put white pepper and like all these other things, I was like, it's just well, chili with beans. But, but you know what? You did an excellent job. Thank you, sir. And you're adding to your repertoire of, of dishes now. Heard, considering you couldn't hear me, I think we did great. Let no, I can hear you. <laughs> but it's really low. It's like it's like you got. I don't understand how the first two weeks you could hear everything, and this week and last week we just lost you mid show. <laughs> I'm not quite. I'm not quite sure. But you got through the dish. That's important. We did it. That's so, all that matters. So next week we're gonna do one next week. Yeah. We're not so I'm going to come up with something a little more more difficult. Sweet. Give some uh, some things you can actually have to do on the air. Give me a challenge. So make sure your insurance is paid up. <laughs> it's not, it's I don't want any knife injury. No. Right. <laughs> My health insurance is a bare minimum right now. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know what? We'll make sure everything's pre-chopped then. There no, I do have a, I have a, uh, I already knew what I wanted to do when it got to the next stage so I can actually tell you how to do something I've never, probably have never done before and adds to your mystique. Sounds good, buddy. Oh, boy, that kind of good. So for the people that are still here watching, there's 18 of you here. Offer still stands. You donate $50 to the link in the bio, I'll come cook for you. If you de donate over $100, which no one has done, I'll shave Dan's chest. Yeah, there's a lot of hair here. We can make this happen. Wow. <laughs> hey, are you going to cook shirtless? Well, we can do that too after the shave. A little, a little my, You can use my line. I do cooking in the buff, but please, no deep fat frying. If I, go couple, if I go a couple more weeks, I'm going to need a, a beard mask. Ouch. I think you're getting a couple requests, Dan. <laughs> All right. But I think they need you to stay overnight. Over 50, Cassie. Over 50. 50 counts, Cassie. I'll come for you for 50. And did, you, did you explain that? That's not age. That's dollars. Okay. Just make sure. <laughs> Just to make sure. You know, some people. The bio. Let's help out the Rhode Hospitality Relief Fund, and we will see everybody next for, week. Hey, for five thousand, I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> I'll good point. Hey, Rock, cheers. I can fly you in for forty. Don't lie. Wow, it is right on Southwest. <laughs> cheers, buddy. We'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Till next week. Bye, Nicholas.